This is Chris Yadiho Painter here on Paint Life TV. Today I got a really cool video for you and this is how to master your cut-ins like a pro. This is a longer video so grab a drink, sit back and relax and hopefully we're gonna get you cutting in laser straight lines on your ceilings. I'm gonna give you some really cool tips and tricks like um, you know, how to breathe properly, how to approach your ceiling cut-ins from the wall to the ceiling. I'm gonna go over some really cool tools that are gonna make cutting in a lot faster and more efficient. You know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because if you don't hit the notification bell, subscribing doesn't mean anything. You gotta click both of them. It's free, simple to do, and it's easy. Now, I'm gonna go back, this is like nine years of tips and tricks I've been given. You're gonna see me back when I was kind of shy and um, you know scared to make videos and stuff, and so I didn't talk very loud, so um, just tell me to talk loud in the comments down um, below but you know some things have changed like one of the things you know I was a self-taught painter so it's just trial and error I used to use a two and a half inch angle sash brush now I use a three inch angle sash brush because I can cut in a lot faster and more efficient I now like a premier Montauk for my interior painting and cut-ins um, that just makes it easier for me the tools and accessories you see in all my videos are typically down in the video description below so just check out that video description if you want to go um, see or hear more about you know the tools that I'm using in the video now let's get on with those tips and tricks but remember you know after watching all these tips and tricks there's nothing that's gonna make you cut in um, more fast more efficient and more efficiently and quicker and straighter than just simple practice you're gonna to have to practice it just takes miles and miles but let's get on with the tips now and I'm gonna give you some tips John's gonna give you some tips if you like this video um, and you want more tips and tricks, what can you do, John? You can check us out on YouTube. We have more videos. Hit that subscribe button because we're always coming out with more content, more tips, more tricks, and more ideas for how to get your job done efficiently and to love what you do. Yeah, and check us out on Instagram, Idaho Painter. So here we go. We're going to give you the tips and tricks right now. So stay tuned. One of the first uh, tips we're going to give you here when I'm cutting in, you've got different parts on your brush. You've got the toe, which is the point on an angle brush, and you've got the heel. I like leading with the toe sometimes, and what that does is that creates a little bit more spring in the bristle, which when you're working with a textured wall, especially a heavily textured wall, makes your brush bristle a little bit stiffer and helps push that paint up into those, uh, those valleys past the peaks. We'll load our brush up here, and I'll lead with that point. I'll start a little pool up, and then I'll bring it up. And that adds that nice stiffness, and especially if you're using a, a nylon or polyester blend brush. Eventually, those bristles end up becoming softer over time as you're using them and that gives a little bit more stiffness while you're working on it through the day or if you've got a really rough texture. So tip number two, I'm going to show you how I start the cut ends and I kind of like to explain it like an airplane taking off and I'm going to start you know, low and then I'm going to rise slowly and steadily rise up to the altitude that I want to begin the cut end and that's going to give you more odds of getting a nice straight cut end. And so I'm going to just take and you'll know, pat my brush, load it up by patting it on my bucket and I like to just I like to just touch it onto the surface and just get ready and so I'm going to touch it and then after I touch it I'm usually about an inch and a half away from the surface and then I'm going to begin gaining altitude and come up to my cut in. So I'm going to load my brush, tap it here and then I'm going to begin rising up to where I want my cut in and then just begin cutting in and I'm just going to drag it down about a foot. So you can see how I gradually rose up to you know, my cut in where I want it. And so that kind of gives you the ability to just take off, get your confidence, build it up to your cut in, and then start drawing, um, start drawing your nice straight line. So that's tip number two, simple. 
So tip number three is using the right brush. You're only as good as the tools you're using, so choosing the right brush is extremely important. And we have two brushes here, and one of the things about having really good straight cut-ins and doing good cut-ins is choosing the brush that has bristles that will give you the best ability, I guess is what I wanna say, to doing straight cut-ins. So John, why don't you go over um, these two brushes here and what we're looking for in bristles and what's gonna give you the ability to make a nice straight line. Well, believe it or not, there is a reason why when you go look at brushes, there's so many different kinds of brushes and it all has to do with the different bristles they're using. Um, when you're using bristles or, or brush to do a lot of cut-ins, you want bristles that are not flagged. And so that is essentially like split ends on the end of the bristle and that holds more paint. The problem is, those ends then are more flimsy and that, that paint stays up on those tips and it makes it more difficult to get those nice clean lines. And so a good example of a good brush for, for cutting in is this is a, a pretty clear cut or we've got a Corona Vegas. Um, both of those, the bristles aren't extremely flagged. You've got kind of a soft touch to them and they will help you get that nice clean line without getting too flimsy at the tip. There's one, one other brush we use, and I know you like doing cut-ins, mm -hmm. and I think it works really, really well in the bristle style. It's a Corona or um, a Wooster Chinex. And the Wooster Chinex, the bristles, instead of coming up and being rounded, they're yeah. really flat. Yeah, and that all has to do with how they're sanding it. And so sometimes you'll pull that, that brush out, and some brushes um, will curve really, really bad, like a, a nice dome. And that's, again, that's great for holding paint. Not so great for getting those nice, easy, clean cut-in lines. So here we go with tip number four, and what I'm using when I'm doing my cut-ins today, I'm using a pretty clear-cut brush, and there's a couple brushes I like for doing really good quality um, cut-ins. I do like a pretty clear-cut. I think the Wooster Chinex, the, the flat profile of the bristles is excellent, so I like to use that one. It's a little bit stiffer this, than this one, so kind of depending on the paints I'm using. I also like um, the Corona Chinex brush. Those are three bucks brushes I like doing my cut-ins with. I am using today, I'm testing out, uh, first time I've used this, I'm using a um, Purdy roller, a four inch roller with their jumbo roller, which rolls over on the edges, which is really good for doing the edges and stuff like this, because the, um, the lint and the pile of the fuzz goes on the edge of the roller, kind of convenient. So here we go with um, tip number four, and tip number four, is um, going over your cut in twice. And I'm gonna take, do my cut in once, I'm gonna rise up there, get up to the altitude I want, right into the cut in, I'm gonna cut in, and then what happens is, this isn't a smooth wall, and we're typically very rarely dealing with smooth walls, or always some type of texture, like orange peel texture, knockdown texture or something. So there's gonna be peaks and valleys, like mountains. And so I'm gonna go over the cut in, and usually I'm gonna have these little spots on my cut in, that didn't get the paint down inside of it, the softer bristle brush, the more of those you're gonna have. The stiffer, stiffer bristle brush is gonna fill in more of those, or even if it's really, really rough, that's where John's technique of using um, the back of the brush, he calls it the heel and toe, I just say back because I'm a little more simple, I guess. But, um, so, so going back over it again is gonna fill those things in. So I'm gonna cut once, go back over it again and cut twice and that's where I can make any corrections also so if my first cut had you know some misses on it or some you know a little bit of waviness to it I could go back and correct it so here we go I'm just gonna get my brush in I'm gonna get it ready and I'm gonna be about an inch or so inch and a half from where I want to be I'm gonna rise up and then do my cut and I typically do you know about a foot and then I tap it come back rise up and then finish my cut. And there was about five little spots that were misses. That second cut going the opposite direction filled them right in. And then, like we typically always do, we um, back roll over our cuts with our roller. And that'll give it the same texture instead of a brush stroke going this way. When you come up and roll your wall, um, you're gonna have the same texture and you're not gonna see a difference. If there's any light spots and stuff, after the wall, the room is all dry, we're gonna come back and um, just touch them up. We're not gonna redo our cut-ins. So tip number five is the cutting lines is a lot like riding a bicycle. The faster you go, the easier it is to keep your balance. 
uh, you know, you don't have to wear a helmet for this, but what you do want to do is move pretty quick when you're moving that line because the, the more concerned you are about it and anxious you are about keeping that line nice and straight, the harder time you're going to have keeping it actually straight. So take a deep breath and let it go. So there you have it. We've got five tips for how to do cut-ins uh, that we enjoy, that we think are awesome. Check us out on theidahopainter.com. You can catch us on Facebook and Instagram at Idaho Painter on Instagram and The Idaho Painter on Facebook. Until then, we'll see you on our next video. Ow. This is Captain Zach with The Apprenticeship. I got a bonus tip for you today. Uh, when cutting in, I like to hold my, my brush out of the bucket like this for a couple of reasons. It's out of the bucket, so it's not gonna get paint all over it, because if you do that, sometimes it falls in. Um, it's nice and secure, it's not going anywhere, and I got easy access to it if I'm gonna go and cut in. We start this task off by using our grid and our nap, and we're gonna load the paint up, and just barely dip the paint into the bucket, and load the nap up, and the, the brush itself, you wanna barely dip the bristle, bristles into the brush. I've been painting for about four, hours now and that's about as much paint as you want on that that brush and bristles you just dip it in lightly pat it on the side of the bucket or pat it on your nap and that's how you actually load up the brush full of paint and we're going to step on the ladder here to properly show you how to cut in the cow molding to get up on the ladder here i'm going to load up my brush and i'm going to start in about six inch sections i'm going to start put my brush about a quarter inch away from the crown molding get the bristles up to a point where I want them. I'm going to drag them about six inches. Reload my brush up and drag it back the opposite direction. Load my brush up again. I'm going to get my bristles about a quarter inch to half inch away. Get them up to approximately where I want. Slowly drag along the crown molding. Reload my brush up. We're going to drag it back the opposite direction. You always want to drag it both ways to do your cut in. I'm going to come back over this side, fill this in right here. Get your bristles, work your bristles slowly up to the point where you want them. Once you get them to the point where you want them and you're going to start forming that line, then you just start moving in that direction. One more time, we're going to get about quarter inch away, work it up to where we want it. Once we get it to where we want it, we start sliding it down. Load your brush up again. Back in the opposite direction. Take your time. If you hold your breath while you're doing it, while you're actually cutting the line, you can get a straighter line. Once you get your cut in done, load your nap up really good, lots of paint. Get within about a half inch, a quarter inch to eliminate any brush strokes. So the texture of their paint will look just like how you roll the walls. The nap actually leaves a specific texture to the paint, which you want to create by eliminating your brush strokes. Bring it down about six inches. When you roll the wall, you bring the wall of paint up to about a half inch from the crown molding. This one, I'm going to go over a couple other specific tips and tricks that's going to improve your cut ends. So I'm going to go over some of the tools that I'm going to be using in this video to show you what I'm using that actually helps me do really, really straight uh, ceiling cut ends and that will help you do a lot better ceiling cut ends that will look just like mine. So I'm going to go over some of these tools right now and one of them that I use that's one of the basic things is going to be just your cut in bucket and I've got a two gallon bucket. I like using a two gallon bucket. It has holds just the right amount of the right amount of paint and inside of it I've got a uh, bucket grid a one gallon bucket grid and I've had some questions people want to know what that grid looks like so I'm gonna pull it out right here I just had a comment on one of my cut-in videos the other day asking if they could actually see the grid and here's the one gallon grid so I use a two gallon bucket and I use a one gallon grid and a one gallon grid just sits down in the bucket just right and it's wide enough that it actually will cover my four inch roller and nap so this is
the roller that I'm using, and it's a Wooster four inch roller right here with a roller cover. I like using the Purdy White Dove uh, roller covers, and I like a three eighths inch roller cover. And I use this to actually, after I do my cut-ins, I use that to actually back roll, back roll over it. So when I roll my ceilings or roll my walls, the stippling will actually match the walls when you roll the walls. The cut-in, when you do the cut-ins, it's gonna leave a brush stroke that grows across the ceilings, but you wanna stipple over that so it actually will match the stippling on the walls. And then two of the tricks that I'm gonna be showing you in this video are gonna require a five-in-one tool, and that's gonna to be to score an edge up there or a groove in your ceiling line that will give you the ability to do a really straight cut in. Got a caulking gun with clear caulking. On some ceilings that are really bumpy and rough, you're gonna put, or you can put, a bead of clear caulking up there. I'm gonna show you that. So those are a couple of the accessories that I got with me that I'm gonna be doing this. And of course, you gotta have a brush. I've got uh, the two brushes that I'm using to do my ceiling cut-ins. They're actually Purdy brushes. I do like Purdy brushes. I've used the Wooster brushes. They're really good. I haven't used the Corona brushes. I heard the Coronas are really good. But depending on the paint you're using will depend on the brush that I use. And if the paint is a really thin paint, I like using a soft or a medium stiff brush and the Purdy XL Glide right here is the brush I use when my paints are pretty thin. If the paints are pretty thick like this uh, Benjamin Moore Ultra Spec right here, I'm gonna use a stiff brush and I like using the Purdy Clear Cut brush right here. This is labeled a stiff brush. It's a nylon polyester brush. And I do use, now, I used to use just two and a half inch angled sash brushes. I've stepped up, I'm using the three inch brushes now. The wider the brush, the farther your cut-ins are gonna go. But I do like an angled sash brush because it can get into the corners a lot easier than just a straight, straight brush. So I'm using this right here today. I'll be using the clear cut, the Purdy Clear Cut Glide brush right here and the glide actually just refers to the handle and the width of the ferrule itself. So got this right here, all these tools. If you're interested in purchasing the same tools that I'm using when I'm doing my ceiling cut-ins, you can check out my video description down there. I'll leave a link to all these tools that I like that I've used and tested for a lot of years. You can also go to my tool store at my website, theidahopainter.com. But now we're gonna get to showing you how to do these ceiling cut-ins and make them look perfectly straight like a professional. So I'm gonna go over two new tips or tricks or hacks here. They're gonna give you really good ceiling lines. And I've had a lot of questions on my previous videos on uh, situations where the ceiling line or the 90 degree angle is extremely rough, has a texture, or say you got um, uh, the popcorn ceilings. And there's a couple of scenarios, a couple of things that will actually help you out to make those ceiling cut-ins a lot easier for you. And one of them is using a five-in-one tool and a simple five-in-one right here. I always carry one of these in my pocket as a painter. There's a lot of things this can be used for, but if you stick a five-in-one tool up in the corner, the 90 degree corner, and you just score a little uh, cut in there, it's gonna leave like this little trough where your brush can actually just cruise along that little score and it'll help you make a straight line. So the ceiling up there, if there's a lot of texture, if it's really rough, you don't have a nice smooth 90 degree angle, then just take your five in one, score it, and then do your cut in. Another option is to actually take and use a caulking gun and clear caulking, but the, the problem with this is, is you do have to wait for the caulking to dry. So you have to do all your caulking of your ceiling and then wait a day and then come back and cut it in. But that'll actually give you a really, really smooth 90 degree corner to be able to do really straight ceiling cut-ins. So I really like that method, like that option if your ceilings are really bumpy and you really want to have a perfectly straight line. One of the things about it is just you just want to put a little small bead in there, not too much caulking, but use clear caulking, let it dry, and then do your cut in. So I'm going to get up here, I'm going to show you what just scoring it looks like, what it looks like to put the caulking on there, and then we're going to do some cut ins. So one of the obvious things that you're actually gonna have to have when you're doing your cut-ins is a ladder, because obviously I can't get up here and do my cut-ins without having a ladder. So I got a six foot ladder here I'm gonna be working with. And I got a caulking gun up here to show you this method. And then I'm gonna show you the five in one tool. Up here, this is a pretty smooth uh, 90 degree angle, but if it was pretty rough, I could just take my five in one. I'm just gonna stick it in here and just 
gouge it right there and it just leaves a little cut right there. So once again, I'm just gonna put it up here, put a little bit of pressure and then just score it right down there. And now I can just do my cut and take my brush in there and just run it right along that score. It's not something that you can see you know, from the video, even if I got the, the video up here close enough, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's really, really microscopic. It's just a little score and you don't wanna see it anyways because it's really, um, because it's, it's a cut in the wall, but the paint actually will just fill that little trough as you run it right across here. But that's a really handy trick to do if you wanna make your ceiling cut in straight. Now we're gonna move on to the caulking method. So if now we're gonna do this option when it comes to caulking, and this would be in extreme cases where it's really bumpy and they've got the spray texture or the texture up into that 90 degree, um, corner up there, I take and cut my caulking, I'm gonna cut my tube at a, at a nice 45 degree angle there and really small, and then I'm gonna put a small bead of clear caulking up there. I'm just gonna, I don't want it to be very big, but it's just gonna be a nice, tiny little bead along there, and then I would just take my finger and then just smooth that out, and then I'm gonna let that dry and it'll have a nice, smooth, rounded corner right there, and it's gonna make it so your cut and your brush will run along a smooth edge and give you a really, really nice straight line. So now I'm gonna to get to doing the cut ends on the ceiling. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks doing the cut ends, and I'm just gonna put, I put some paint in my bucket, and I usually put you know a couple inches of paint in my bucket, I don't want it up too high, you don't want it too low, you want to have enough in there that you can work with and not having to fill your bucket all the time. But I'm going to get my, my roller all loaded up, I want that thing completely loaded up, ready to use. I think it's really important that you back brush your cut ends. And then I'm going to get my brush full of paint and I like to just take, dip my brush in here and then I just pat it on the side of my bucket. So I'm just going to pat it on the side get it loaded up, pat it on the side, and then I'm ready to actually paint. And a couple of the, the tips to not spilling paint or getting paint dripped everywhere, just take it, load up your, your brush. Don't want to get too much paint on it, but get a little bit of paint on it, pat it to the side, and as I move it to my area that I'm actually going to be painting, I actually subconsciously, I do because I've been painting so long, but you actually turn your brush or rotate your brush so it doesn't actually drip. So I'm going to pat it in here, make sure it's not dripping, and then I'm going to rotate my brush to where I'm going. As long as your brush is rotating, you can put a lot of paint on this thing, and if I let it set here, it's, it's going to start to drip, but as long as I rotate this brush, in different directions, it will never drip. So whenever I'm taking my brush to my cut-in area where I'm gonna do my cut-in, I'm actually rotating it. And it's a technique that I actually use when I'm rolling walls too, or doing my cut-ins with my four-inch brush. I'm gonna take my roller, I'm gonna take it out of my bucket, and I'm gonna be rotating it as I go. And it's just something I do now after so many years, I'm subconsciously pulling out of my bucket and then rotate it so it's not gonna do any drips. As long as this thing is rotating, it will never drip on your floor. So I'm gonna get up here and do my ceiling cut-ins. And I do have, I think, at least four or five videos on how to do ceiling cut-ins. It gives you a lot of tips and tricks, more than what I'll show you even here. So you gotta go check out my playlist on doing ceiling cut-ins like a professional. But I'm gonna get it up here, put my brush there, and I actually get it away, like a half an inch away from my cut-in area, and then I begin to work up to it, and then I drag my paint one way, and typically it's gonna go about, you know, over a foot or so, and then I'll come back the opposite direction and drag it back the opposite direction, because typically your wall is gonna have texture in it, and as you're dragging your paint one way, it's gonna go over the top of the textures and leave some mist spots. So you drag it one way, drag it back the next way, and after I drag it back the next way, then I take and I back roll it. But I'll take and do a full a section, and I'm gonna do this whole section, I'm gonna drag it one way, I'm gonna come back and drag it another way. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more. Drag it one way, come back and drag it another way. Do this section over here. I'm gonna drag it one way, and then drag it another way. 
And then I'm gonna come back and back roll because this now is brushed and if I roll my walls now up to here, you're gonna see a different texture left by the paint from rolling it versus brushing it. So I always go back and back roll it just like this. And I try to get as close as I can to the ceiling and then I move on and do my next section. It's just like that, I'm gonna come up and turn your brush as you're coming. One way, go back the other way. Just like that, and then you're gonna back roll it. And just like that, that's how you do your ceiling cut-ins. And I typically like the method of ceiling cut-ins that I do. I like my, my cut-in, especially if you got really bumpy ceilings or corners, I like my paint to go up onto the ceiling very slightly versus down onto the wall only slightly because it goes up onto the ceiling a little bit. When you're looking at it, it will always look straighter than if it's below the ceiling a little bit. You'll see a crooked line a lot better. So I'm always siding to getting my paint onto the ceiling versus keeping it down onto the wall. Okay, I gotta get another section again. Just gonna give you one last demonstration again. I'm just gonna take, dip my brush into my paint, gonna pat it on the sides, make sure my brush is loaded up, and now I'm gonna carry it to where I'm going. I'm gonna take, get it about an inch or so from my cut-in area, and then I'm gonna work up to the cut-in, glide it right along my ceiling, it's gonna go about a foot or so before it starts to run out of paint, before it starts to run out of paint. Just take and cut it back the opposite direction. And then you're gonna back roll it. To me this back rolling process is extremely important to back roll this to eliminate haloing or any type of color difference. When you're actually brushing it versus rolling it, it lays out the tint in a different way. So you could actually get a color difference where you've actually brushed it versus where you actually rolled your wall. So to me, I really uh, think it's an important process to actually back roll that. And then the next step would be to begin rolling your walls. If you're you know, uh, the only person working on a room, I like to, before this actually dries, I like to roll my wall. So if you do the whole ceiling, I can actually do a whole bedroom, basically a 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 bedroom. I can cut that whole ceiling in, it'll still be wet, and then I can start rolling on my walls because I can do it really fast, I got a lot of experience. But if you're just learning and your cut-ins are really slow, by the time you get around the room, this is gonna be dry and it could give you a haloing effect where you see the color difference where you rolled it, where you cut it in versus where you rolled it. So I, I would just, as a one-man show, just do one wall at a time. So I'm gonna cut this ceiling in right here, this wall, and then before, before I turn the corner, I'm gonna roll this wall and then move on to the next wall. And one of the tips to actually doing these cut-ins, I think I've discussed it once before in one of my cut-in videos, is to actually hold your breath. So when you're doing your cut-in, get it up there and just hold your breath, do your cut-in, and because it, it, while you're breathing, it has a tendency to actually make your cut-ins a little bit crooked until you get a lot more experience doing your cut-ins. Then you could actually breathe and talk and like I'm actually doing and doing them. But it's taken me years and years uh, and miles and miles of doing ceiling cut-ins to get them straight like this. This is the corner plus roller. And these were sent to us, what, a couple, almost a year ago, Almost right? a year ago, the first revision of them. And mm -hmm. we really liked them, but we yeah. thought, the quality of the nap itself wasn't good. A lot of the lints were coming out and we asked them to revise it to make it you know, from a four star item to a five star item and they made a revision. They have, they made them microfiber, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, this is the third generation. So they went from you know, one generation to the purple generation to now this and it's the microfiber and this yeah. thing is the bomb now. Yeah, so it, it comes in a half inch nap, it's microfiber. This is actually like a top quality microfiber. I don't like I don't feel like they went cheap Man, on this thing right They here. did not go cheap. That thing in the um, edge of it is trimmed really nice, perfectly, but the microfiber is high quality, nothing comes out of it. And yeah. so what the heck does it really do, John? It's so, not just a typical roller. Yeah, it's not just a typical nine inch roller, and you might think it's a little silly, but they rounded it over on the end on a, yeah. on a full nine inch roller. I know there are some other companies that have 
something kind of like that, but this is made so that you can actually just roll your ceiling cut-ins, and that's where we use it a lot. Yep. When we're rolling ceilings, we'll have one of the guys bust out a nine inch roller. They'll bring that ceiling color all the way down to the wall, or if we're doing the corners on walls, that it, it just works. Yeah, it, it works and it works amazing. We did post it on our social media just here recently, mm -hmm. and said so people wanted to see it in action and wanted to see proof that it worked, and we're gonna show you proof right here because we do sell it, on our tool store. We think that much of it, we sell at our own paint life store and we only sell a limited products on there that we just think are real game changers that every painter or even do it yourselfer should have. And yeah. this is one of them. And it's uh, it's not easy to get a hold of. In fact, I don't know if there are a lot of other places you can get a hold of it besides yes. our tool store, but this is worth carrying in your, your vehicles. Our tool store is the IdahoPainter.com if you didn't know our paint life store. So check this out. We've already loaded up the roller and because we just got these were brand new we just got them ourselves the third revision and we had to test them ourselves to make sure they met our standards and quality so here we go just loading up the roller and you can see on the end of the roller it's roller it's got paint all the way around the microfiber is wrapped up so you can see just right there just rolling that how it fills that in and that that corner right there has got a lot of texture to it. So, yeah. and it's got a lot of deep texture and it covered it. So it's simple, you just use it just like a regular roller. This is one roller that will complete several different tasks right there, doing ceilings, doing your edge cut, edge cut ends. I would typically um, fill that in with a brush and then I would hit it with a four inch roller after that. And now I don't have to do that. Yeah, and typically where we're especially using it is something like ceilings, like I said before. We'll have someone roll around if the ceilings are a different color than the walls because they can roll around. They don't have to climb up a ladder, cut it in. They can use an extension pole, a regular nine inch frame, pop this roller on, and it saves a ton of time and a ton of work. A ton of time and ton of work and that um, energy going up and down a ladder like in a house like this all day long you'd be going up and down a ladder typically you do they do have you know such thing as a four inch um, not this company but like the four inch jumbo rollers you'll have a um, they're kind of folded over by one company but this right here is a nine inch roller it's a lot larger covers a lot more say, this one you get almost that two full inches there yeah. of, of, of the color being brought over and now that it's microfiber too like the, I think before the earlier revisions would have a little bit of a problem with some drips or splatter or things yeah. like that because there's just kind of a polyester blend whatever on the top of the the core this the, there's no drips it's holding on to it some people are going to get worried about having paint on the end of their roller there and while it's spinning it's going to be flicking it off but the microfiber actually holds all of that paint in it's like little fingers grabbing onto your paint so there you have it, the Corner Plus Roller. So we do sell them in our tool store at theidahopainter.com. How much do they sell for, John? They sell for a single roller for $8 or a three pack for $21. You gotta have these things in your paint truck or your paint van, or yeah. if you're a do-it-yourselfer, just have one kicking around in your house. Yeah, especially if, if you've got high ceilings, something like that, an extension pole and a corner roller is gonna save you from climbing up if you've got a big foyer to do or something like yeah. that. Need to adjust your neck or need a pillow? Give it a try. Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up, man. Just hit that thumbs up. Bang that little notification bell. That way you get notified next time we come out with a new video. I'm just going to dip my brush slightly in, about an inch into the paint. I'm going to pat it on the side of the bucket. And I'm going to set my brush up here on the ceiling. And I'm going to begin dragging my brush along the ceiling line, doing my cut in, and then I drag it one way about a foot, dip the paint again, and then I bring it back and I drag it the opposite direction, and then just lay down the brush, and then I go back and then back roll it with paint from my mat. That way the stippling will match the stippling from a nap when the wall is rolled. And then I'll go back up, cut about another foot, I'm gonna drag it one direction. And I like to drag it both directions because you know it'll miss some holes and stuff in the texturing. If you drag it the other direction, it'll actually fill those holes back in that got missed. And if they're still missed, I'll drag it both ways. 
just like that. I'll load my nap up and then pull it out. And we always like to do our cut-ins first before we roll because it'll minimize the haloing. If you roll your walls first and do your cut-ins, you'll get possibly a halo across the top of the ceiling. So it's good practice to do your cut-ins first. And then while the cut-ins are wet, then you want to take and roll a wall. So back up here, get into a corner. I'm going to work my way up a corner too to where my cut-in is. And I like to take and roll the corners just to make it so the person rolling the wall has an easier time doing the corners. Same practice, it's good to do your corners first so you don't get that halo created by, even though it's the same color, it could show haloing. So I'm going to drag it one way. And if you're new at cut-ins, don't got a lot of practice, it's good to hold your breath. Just pat it, just hold your breath. The opposite direction, if you got to lay it out again, one more time, lay it out again. Then I'll cut it in again. Back the opposite direction. And I can do about three or four feet and then roll, so just pat your brush. Don't dip your bristles too far in. You want to dip your bristles just about an inch. Cut it one direction. Go back the other direction. Just use the very tip of the brush to get up there and you're basically drawing a line. So I can get about you know, several feet, then go back, back roll it. Bristles in, just an inch to half inch, just tap it on the side, just to load up your brush. I'm going to take, I'm going to place my brush about a half inch from the ceiling, then I'm going to work it up. Just glide it right along. And it'll go about a foot or so and dip it back in. And just gonna get right here, work my way up to the ceiling. Do about another foot section. Back roll it, I want to get about, about an inch to half inch from the ceiling. Just like that. We've got another section above a door here, you can just fill that in to make the person rolling with an 18 inch nap or 9 inch nap a little easier so they don't have to work above doors. Once again, I'm going to take place my brush about an inch from the ceiling, and then I'm going to glide and then Get it right up against the ceiling, back the opposite direction. We're going to fill it in four inch now. Now you want to have somebody rolling behind you to come up about an inch from the ceiling and that way the two wet paints will gel together and will create your color haloing. This is Chris, the Idaho painter from Boise, Idaho, how to do a ceiling cut in. Load up the brush. We're just take and set our brush 
here and about a half inch away. And now we're going to start working the brush up to our cut in and then drag it along. If I want to make corrections, if the cut in didn't get filled in right, I'm going to start in the opposite direction, get about a half inch away, and just use a few bristles to draw your line. You don't want the whole brush, just a few of the bristles are going to come up to the top and basically draw that line for you. We're not using the whole brush to cut it in, we're just using just the tip of it. So part of the process of getting good ceiling cut-ins is, is having the proper equipment. And I've had in a couple of my previous cut-in videos, I've showed you some of the products that I use, the brushes I use, the buckets and screens I use. So you can go back and check out those videos. I'm not gonna go into depth about them right now, but right now I'm using a three inch angle sash pretty clear cut brush and it's a stiff bristle brush because I'm using a really thick paint right now. So I'm gonna go begin doing these cut-ins and a couple of things to doing really good cut-ins is holding your brush properly when you're actually doing those cut-ins. I'm gonna go over a little bit about how to actually hold a brush when you're doing your cut-ins. And this is a method that I use, it actually works for me, that will give me really, really good straight lines. So I'm gonna show you how I actually hold a brush. So I have my paintbrush right here, and when I get ready to go do my cut-ins, I actually hold my brush just like this. I actually secure the brush on one side with my thumb. Hopefully you can see that right there in this video. So I secure it with my thumb on the one side, and then my other four fingers hold the brush on this side, and that's what actually gives me a, the ability to hold this brush in my hand and stabilize it and control it really well. So it's a four fingered method. I'm holding it with four fingers on this side and my thumb on the opposite side. And then when I'm doing my cut ins, I'm cutting in just like this. So I'm holding it. Sometimes I actually let my small finger free and hold it like that. But typically I'm gonna have four fingers on that brush. And that also depends on the size of the brush you're using. If you're using a brush that's two inches or smaller, you're typically not gonna have four fingers on that brush because the brush, the ferrule is really small. But this is a larger brush so I can get my hands on that brush and control it really well. And one of the techniques of bringing your paint up to your cut in when you're holding your brush is I discussed in one of my other videos is to actually rotate that brush. And as you see, this brush is actually fully loaded with paint right now and I'm actually rotating it around so it actually doesn't drip. So I'm gonna pull it out of my bucket, rotate it up and get it to my position to do my cut in. So I'm gonna do a cut in right now, just showing you how I actually hold that brush and I'm holding it once again, just like that. And the method, you're gonna take, get your brush up there within about a half an inch and then bring it up to your cut in and then begin your cut in. You're gonna go about a little bit more than a foot, go back the opposite direction to fill in any of those spots that didn't get filled in when you went the one direction the first time. So there you go, how to properly hold the brush. Now I'm gonna talk about how I actually hold the brush in my bucket when I'm actually doing my back rolling with my roller. So once I got my cut in done with my brush up there, a length, uh, usually about twice as much as is that, then I go back and back roll it with my roller. And when I'm back rolling it, I don't want my brush to be inside my bucket of paint because then it's gonna get paint all over the brush and it's gonna get all messy and, and make a big mess. So I actually hold my brush with my bucket just like this. So I got the brush, got my bucket in one hand and I'll show you right here. My brush is held with this finger and my thumb secured in the bucket just like that. So it's held with these two fingers right here so i secure my bucket with the two of my first three fingers right here in the handle and then i put my brush 
inside there and it hangs right in the middle. And I'll try to give you a little bit better view once I get up this ladder what that looks like. But now I can sit there and load up my roller and then do my back brushing or back rolling. So when I go to put my roller inside my bucket, all I do is just tilt my brush to the side and then I can hang or actually load my roller up. And you always want to have a roller that has a roller frame that has some type of hooks that you can actually hook your roller on the inside of your bucket just like that so your roller can hang while you're actually using your brush and doing your cut ends with your brush. So once again, I'm going to load up my brush. Just dip it in my paint, pat it on the sides. Now I can actually bring it up using the method that I just showed you, how to do the cut ends. And I'll take my brush, get it about a half inch from the ceiling, work it up to my ceiling. I'm gonna cut one way, and then I'll cut the opposite way to fill it in. And then I'm gonna look at that and make sure that it's all completely filled in. If I miss this spot or anything, there's a little spot right here that I didn't cover. I can go back, cut that in. And then once I do about a two foot section, I'm just going to back roll it with my roller so it will blend in with my wall. And the whole back rolling process, why I actually back roll it, I explained in a previous video that I did doing ceiling cut-ins that you can check out at the end of this video. I'm going to give you one more tip when it comes to doing ceiling cut-ins and this is how I actually stand on a ladder when I'm doing my cut-ins and when I'm doing my cut-ins I'm typically using either a six foot ladder or a three foot ladder but I always want to have the ladder or typically always have the ladder I'm going to walk up it at an angle like this and I like to actually do my cut-ins with the ladder right here so I can face the ladder and lean up against the ladder and have myself supported. It is a lot harder to do your cut-ins this way and not have the support of the ladder in case you tilt forward and fall forward. Sometimes in the videos, I gotta do it just to, for video purposes, stand the opposite direction. But it'll make you a lot more secure on the ladder to actually be facing the ladder and doing your cut-ins that way. So once again, I'm gonna load up my brush, pat it on the side. Gonna bring my brush up to my cut in. I'm gonna work about a foot section, go back, work the opposite direction. Then I'm gonna load up my brush, pat it on the side, bring it up to the ceiling, cut it one direction. I'm gonna cut it back the opposite direction. Gonna load it up one more time. Gonna bring it up to the ceiling, cut it. And there's these little spots I missed from the first cut, so I go back, cut the opposite direction. Now I'm gonna once again fill it in with my roller. Get that four inch roller as close as you can to the ceiling, about a half an inch from the ceiling. And there you have it. This was Chris the Idaho Painter bringing you more tips and tricks on doing perfect ceiling cut-ins like a professional did it. At the end of this video, you can also check out in my video description all the tools and accessories I'm using in my videos is down in the video description. You can also find the playlist to actually watch more of my cut-in videos. I got a whole playlist of them to teach you how to cut in like a pro. And we'll see you on my next video. And today I got a really cool tool to show you. It's the Richards Gooseneck Paintbrush. And you can see we've used this thing quite a bit. It's an awesome paintbrush. And there's a couple things that it does that are really unique. It bends, stays bent, and then it screws onto an extension pole. And where that comes in handy is a situation just like this. I've got a light in the center of this vaulted ceiling right here. And I could get up there and cut it in with a ladder, but I don't have access to it because there's some furniture right here I cannot move. It's all covered with plastic. So I'm going to use this really cool tool to cut in around it. All I got to do is screw it on an extension pole. It stays nice and tight. I can bend it. It stays in that position bent. 
and I can use the bending ability like this to work around that situation I have right up there. I've got a decorative kind of a wood um, plate up there I've got to work around. I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna take and use a four inch roller to get as close as I can right here so I don't have to do as much with the paintbrush and then I'm gonna do the final cut in with the brush itself. I'm gonna take off the brush first and then I'm gonna screw on my four inch roller once I get ready to start doing the cut in with the brush, all it is is just being really patient. Just take your time and have a steady hand. So I did the bulk of it right there with the four inch roller. Now it's gonna take two coats too. Now I'm gonna take my four inch roller, remove that. I'm gonna put on the gooseneck and I'm gonna load the gooseneck up in the bucket and get it up there, start doing this cut in. I'm gonna do one coat, let it dry, see if there's any touch-ups that I need to do after it dries. There's just one more little spot I need to hit. Looks like I'm gonna have to take and bend my brush a little bit. You see, I got my brush bent at a little slight angle, gives me ability to get right up next to that. Now I think I got everything covered on that side. Like I said, I'm gonna let it dry come back, check and see if I need to put on another coat, but I got it right up next to that board. Looks pretty good. It's the gooseneck brush right here from Richards. You got to check it out. It's a must have. We use these things all the time. This is Chris, the Idaho painter here on Paint Life TV. Hope so we're actually going along and fixing the edges of the trim work here. And we're going to be repainting this whole house and we're repainting the walls, but not the trim. The customer did have some of the trim paint left over from the house when it was built originally and the trim job itself, um, they had somebody come in and actually paint this um, house and the rooms and the lines were extremely crooked on this and they got paint all over the, the trim itself and in order for us to actually make it look good, we're going along and actually just repainting the edges of the baseboards and you can see we're actually just taking paint and brushing it up onto the wall a little bit and to try to um, fix and all those lines and we actually go along just paint all the edges of the baseboard all the edges of the door jams and stuff and then let that dry a day and then we come back and mask over that and then we'll be doing our walls and that way our lines will be completely straight Otherwise, if we were trying to mask over areas like that, it would be extremely difficult to get a straight line, and our line would have to go way over those areas. And so this is a quick solution to fixing uh, bad painters' cut-ins. This is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today I'm going to be talking about a subject, and it's why we use tape and a brush to do our cut-ins and not just hand cut everything in by a brush. It's an interesting topic I get a lot of questions about, so stay tuned for this video. So now I want to talk about why we use tape and why we use a brush to do our cut-ins specifically around our window trim, door jams, and baseboards. There's a few reasons why, and one of them, there is a labor shortage of painters out there that are available, good qualified painters. There is also the ability to make effective members of your team very quickly and efficiently. And then there's also the element, I just want guys to begin having fun painting right off the bat when they start working for me so they enjoy the job and 
they'll stay around for a long period of time. So now when I talk about the labor shortage there is in painting, I've had the ability to travel all across the US and across the world. I've been all across the United States. I've been to the UK multiple times. I've been to Australia. I've been to Germany several times. And everywhere I've go, I've had the ability to sit down with owners of paint companies. And like me, their struggles, number one struggle is quality help and in the trades. And I know I've had, you know, on the back of my vehicle for quite a few years, I've had this now hiring sign. I had one on there. It was stickered logoed on there for about five years and I was getting almost no calls. I think in five years, maybe two or three calls, you know, for, um, to get a job. And there is just a serious lack of labor, skilled labor. It would be nice if I could get a guy, you know, right off the bat that he can take and cut in around here with no masking. It would save me the masking or cut in ceilings and be just as efficient and effective. But there's just a lack of labor out there in the trades across the world. So what I did is about 15 years ago because of that, and it's been a long time ago, and I think it's just gotten worse and worse over the years. I turned uh, this method of paint and tape into a method I can teach young kids who have no skill in painting whatsoever. I can teach them how to be effective members of your team right off the bat. And now I'm going to talk about that in this next part of the video. We use several different types of tape. I use, um, this is CP199, this is our production tape. I use frog tape, which actually has a, a product, a dusted product on the outside of the frog tape that swells, that keeps paint from bleeding underneath. That's a very effective tape. Frog tape has now come out with a blue tape that's even less than their green tape, significantly less, because it's packaged in contractor packs and the paper is cheaper on it. But these are the three tapes I use. But taking a, a kid and I can teach teach them how to mask around, say, like a window like this, or I can teach them how to mask on baseboards really, really quick. And typically, like somebody skilled, maybe uh, two weeks at most. Once he can mask a straight line, that's the first step. We'll typically take these kids, college kids, high school kids, hire them, and then teach them how to do the prepping process. So some of that is masking, some of that is caulking, and some of that is sanding. But when it comes to the painting process, I wanna teach them how to mask quickly, and you're only as good as your masking. So once they can mask a perfectly straight line, I can teach them how to take a paintbrush and paint over that masking that they just applied on there and back roll over it with a brush right off the bat. And then once they peel that off, they're gonna have perfectly straight lines right off the bat. It's an amazing, effective system that you can teach somebody how to be an effective member of your team and ultimately a profitable member of your team because it really is about taking these kids, taking somebody, teaching them how to use this and them making you money because we're all typically, us business owners, we're in this to make money. Now, once again, it's nice if I can hire you know, a guy, you know, professional skilled painter that can hand cut all that in, but there's just a lack of those guys out there. Now, when it comes to ceilings, all of our ceiling cut-ins, that's all hand cut in. So still on our team, I can have the apprentices do this type of work. They typically will handle the baseboards, they'll handle the uh, window trim, and they'll handle the door trim, but our supervisor or leads are the ones, they're the skilled painters, skilled with a brush. This takes a lot of years to learn how to cut in. So this system, I'm teaching a kid how to do this literally in about a month. They can create really nice, perfectly crisp lines in a month, but in order to teach them how to do that with a paintbrush, that's probably going to take somebody about five years to learn how to do that, to be really, really effective, efficient, and then get a straight line. And I know this is going to be an arguable point, but I don't think there's anybody out there that can take a brush. I know I've been, you know, hand cutting in stuff for over 18 years, thousands and thousands of miles in a line that I've created with, say, frog tape and caulking or even frog tape on a smooth surface and a brush and paint. It, it's absolutely laser sharp and I can never be consistent with my cut in and have it that straight for a long period of time. It's just fast and effective. So it's just making fast and effective members of your team. It's simple. It's something you got to try. Give it a try. Don't knock it until you've tried it. You know you're going to get a lot of comments, but you still can't do a straight line. I know.
So the next thing I want to talk about is taking somebody that's new in the trades and getting them doing this method. It gets them painting right off the bat. And one thing, I'm taking these young kids, high school kids, college kids, and I know I keep saying young all the time. We do hire you know, people that are coming into the trades even in the mid-30s and stuff, and they're not young high school kids and college kids, just guys getting into the trades that for whatever reason they want to get into the trades and they're apprentices also. But what I'm trying to do, you know, one of my goals is to get people to come into the trades and really enjoy what they're doing. And I do have a friend that has a painting business here and what he does is his new apprentices come in and they have to sand for six months before they can move on to anything else. And I can't imagine you know, having to uh, block sand with a sanding block. They use sanding blocks in new construction here and having to do that for six months. I, I think I would probably be burnt out after about two weeks and would never want to be involved in painting again. And no, everybody that comes, these young kids that come work for us, they want to start painting. Everybody wants to paint. Everybody wants a brush and a roller in their hand, and everybody wants this spray. And the faster I can get a spray gun in their hand, the quick, the more they're going to enjoy what they do, and the more fun they're going to come to work with a smile on their face and just love it. And that's one of my major goals. So I can take a kid, he can start prepping for me, and um, in, within two weeks, he can master straight line. Within you know a month, he can be painting around his straight lines, and now he has a brush and roller in his hand, and he's actually painting. And that's the fun part about it. If if you have somebody that, you know, it's just taking them more time and they're not getting the prepping process done faster, we, we run into some of those guys every now and then. I think the longest it takes anybody working for us before they start brushing and rolling anything is three months, but typically about a month is when somebody can start doing this. Now, the skilled painter is gonna fill in the wall, the skilled painter is gonna do all the hand cut ends. I do use a brush. I know a lot of people think all I do is just tape and caulk everything and I don't know how to cut in a straight line. I do have about 10 videos, I think, that on how to do cut-ins, teaching how to do cut-ins. So we do use, use brushes. I do typically doing a lot of uh, ceiling cut-ins. I've done years and years, thousands and thousands of miles of ceiling cut-ins. Like I say, there is a time and a place Every single job needs that skilled, that skilled labor, that professional, or that journeyman to do that type of stuff. But once again, I want to make people, you know, happy. I want my employees to come to work happy and enjoy what they're doing and have a long career in this. I know some people are going to say, well, you're going to teach them too much. You're going to teach them how to spray. Then they're going to leave and just be your competitors. That's another thing I never worry about. There's not um, a lack of work out there. I know we're turning down a lot of jobs, you know, weekly and daily so there's a ton of work you just need to know how to go get the work through effective marketing techniques so you know once again I'm not concerned about teaching them too much and leaving I have taught quite a few painters out there that um, have painting companies now in the valley they're not my competition I'm happy for them and thankful that their ability to do they got the ability to do what they want to do and do what they love to do so hopefully that will give you some insight about why we do what we do why we use you know, tape and why we use brushes. There's a time and a place for these things. There's a time and a place for a brush too. I would say, you know, um, we probably, uh, you, we do, you know, 50, 50. We're probably cutting in stuff about 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time we're using the tape and brush method. And typically the apprentices are the ones that are using the tape and brush methods. The journeyman painters, the ones that got a lot more skill on our jobs. They're the ones hand cutting in things. You don't see it simultaneously because we're typically shooting a video specifically on one subject using one method at that time. I do got some, some really good videos out there how we use tape, caulking, and a brush to get perfectly straight lines. You can go check those videos out after this video. One of them is uh, just recently done. It's got quite a few videos on it and um, or quite a few views on it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please Give us a thumbs up. If you've got any tips or tricks, if you got any uh, statements or comments about what I've said in this video, just leave it right down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. If you've got any other methods that are different and effective, um, effective ways to make effective members of your painting team, team, tame, whatever you want to call it, leave it right down below. And hopefully, once again, you've enjoyed this video. You've enjoyed this talk on the painting subject and the painting trades. Hopefully we'll see you next time on our next video on Paint Life TV. Like we always say, we'll see you in our next video.
out. One of the things when you're doing your cut ends, you want to determine your paint, you know, whether it's a thick or thin product. And if you're using a paint on your walls that's a dark, deep color and it's really thin, you're going to want to use a softer brush. But if you're using a really thick paint and usually light colors are thicker, we're using a product from Sherwin Williams called Treasure Valley Eggshell. And it's an extremely thick product. And with those thick products, I like a really, really thick brush or a stiff brush. So. Um, when I'm using this product, Treasure Valley Eggshell, I actually like to use a Sherwin-Williams brush and it's actually an exterior brush and it's their exterior contractor series brush and it's extremely thick and, or extremely stiff and durable. And the stiffer the brush, the actual, the straighter the line you can get. And it's the straighter the line that I can get after I've been, you know, cutting in and doing ceiling cut-ins for a lot of years. And then, you know, while I'm doing my ceiling cut-ins, I'm also using a four inch nap to back roll the cut-ins. That way it doesn't leave a brush stroke, but it's stippled just like the walls when the walls are rolled. And I've got a two gallon bucket, and then I've got a one gallon bucket grid inside that bucket to do these cut-ins. And we'll show you, I'm gonna get up here and do the cut-ins, give you some quick and simple tips doing these cut-ins. So I'm working on the ceiling cut. I'm gonna start the ceiling cut-in and I'm gonna start from the corner over here. I've got my brush, just gonna be dipping my brush into my, my uh, bucket of paint. And I actually like to just tap the brush, my brush on the side of the bucket and to make sure it's not gonna drip. So I'm gonna dip into my paint, tap it on the side. And then while I'm holding my brush, if you turn your brush, it won't ever drip. But if you hold your brush like this, eventually the paint's gonna sag and begin to drip. But when I'm moving it to wherever I'm going, I'm actually gonna be twisting my brush in a twisting motion. And when I'm gonna start in a corner, and when I actually start this corner, I'm gonna, I use a two and a half inch angled sash brush so it comes to a point on the end. And with that point, I could work it up into the corner. And I'm just gonna slowly work it to the corner to the point gets right in that corner and then I'm gonna start my cut in and move away from me, just like that. So I'm gonna dip my brush in, get some paint on it, load it up, and then just work it along my edge. And if you go really slow doing your cut ends, your line's gonna be more crooked. So the faster you can go, the straighter the line you can make. Obviously that takes a lot of practice to go faster, but the more you do it, the faster you can go. So one thing I've learned is if I can make my cut in really quick and use a stiff brush, I'm gonna have a nice straight line. So I'm gonna get my brush up here, work it up into, I start about an inch away from my, my ceiling and then I'm gonna work it up to the ceiling and I'm gonna get it started. And then I'm gonna start running it along my ceiling, just like that. And then after I cut it in one direction, I go back and just, make sure there was no missed spots and check my cut in like that and then eventually i'm going to take my nap and back roll my cut in up to about a half inch away from the ceiling so i'm going to get it up here and then i'll reach over here and i'll reach from this direction and move back to my other cut in i just created so i'm going to get it up there work it up to the ceiling and then a little bit about breathing once i get it to the ceiling I typically will hold my breath and then begin to draw my line with my brush. I like to describe it as drawing the line because I'm actually drawing a line with a brush. So get it up there, hold your breath, cut your line, and then breathe again. So get it up here, work it up here, and then hold your breath. Just like that, I drew my line. Now there's a few little light pinholes and missed spots that the brush didn't get into because sometimes the brush going one direction will go over the top of some little hills and valleys. So you just load your brush up again, go back the opposite direction. But when you go back the opposite direction to fill in those little pinholes, you don't get near your cut in. You'll stay about an eighth of an inch away from your cut in. So now I got the cut in done. I'm gonna go back and back roll it. And now ideally somebody should be following you up 
and rolling this wall so you don't get what we call as haloing and that's discussed in another subject but if you're doing it yourself your cut ends just go from you know one wall at a time so i'm going to do my ceiling cut ends then i'm going to roll my wall and then move to the next wall so i'm going to be working my way this way i'm going to start from this side work my way to this corner right here i'm just going to get my brush loaded up get my bristles set get them right up next to my ceiling and now i'll begin drawing my line I wanted to make this video because I wanted to, you know, um, make it pretty Im a, a pretty important subject or pretty important tip to it, to doing ceiling lines. You actually get in a straight line. One of the most important things to get in a straight line is choosing the actual right brush for the paint you're actually using. If you don't have the right brush, if I got too soft of a brush for the paint I'm using, like this paint is really thick paint. If I'm using too soft of a brush, it's really really difficult to get a straight line. So you got to really determine what type of paint you're using and use the right type of brush to go with that paint. Now if I'm using, you know, uh, a paint that's really thin, like an ultra deep paint, like a red paint, uh, vibrant red wall or something, some of these uh, colors are really popular, then I'm going to want to use a, a really s soft brush that uh, that's going to draw myself a better line than a stiff brush. A stiff brush isn't going to be good with thin paints, ultra deep paints, because one thing, it won't lay out enough paint and won't make a straight line. Once again, I'm painting, doing my cut ends here. I'm actually using an extremely stiff brush, the stiffest brush I can, you know, find for this type of paint we're using that's really thick is a Sherwin Williams contractor's brush. It's a two and a half inch angled sash brush and just so much of getting a straight cut in line is determined by you know you and whether you're choosing the right brush. Now, if you choose a brush that's too stiff for the paint, it's not going to lay the paint out properly. It's going to leave a lot of roping marks and um, light spots, so highs and lows if the brush is too stiff. So, you know, you as a painter, you've got to determine the type of paint you're using and use the proper brush. You can get just an all-around brush that'll work for most paints, like Purdy has an XL Glide brush that I like that's really good for, um, for most paints. But when we're using this paint right here, Treasure Valley Eggshell, I like a really st stiff brush. You know, my philosophy is the stiffer the brush and straighter the line you're gonna be able to cut in. This is my favorite brush for doing interior painting. It's a Premier Montauk. It's what I like to do cut-ins with in all my interior painting. But look, we've got the Stinger, we've got the Wedge, we've got the Elegance, and we've got the High Capacity. So I'm gonna test these brushes, see if they're better than this brush, and I'll let you know, so stay tuned for this video. All right, now I'm gonna start doing some cut-ins up here. I'm gonna be testing using PPG Timeless. And this is gonna be really challenging because this is a one coat paint. I've been painting with it. It's really watery and it really drips really bad. So it's been really annoying me, but it covers amazing. It says it's a one coat paint and I just about believe it, um, how well it's covered on these walls right here. It dries really fast, strong odor. Um, I like the sheen to it, it's an eggshell sheen. I don't know, if you've used it, PPG Timeless, let us know down in the comments section below what you think. Some of you may have seen this thing on social media before. It has two different filament types on it, and then the one filament type, it comes out to a point, apparently, to make cutting in a lot easier. We're gonna see if that helps you. This is, in, um, it is Stinger, and it, the company is just Stinger. That's all they make is that brush. So we're gonna put that one to the test. I do have this brush right here. This is, you can see I've used it um, before. It's a high capacity brush from Purdy. Now, we're gonna see if it makes cutting in a lot easier. I'll say the quality of the brush is not a very good quality brush. When I was painting with it, the bristles were coming out left and right on it. I was not happy with it, but hey, does it cut in better? Is it gonna make cutting in easier for you? We're gonna put it to the test. This little unusual thing, I've seen some guys using this and I was wondering how in the world could you cut in with this? But I saw him use it, I get it, 
you take and you roll it in your fingers as you're painting, and I think it actually works. This one's from Richard. It's called The Elegance. Um, there's a company that makes some stall mice or makes probably the best one I've ever seen. An incredible paintbrush. Here, we're gonna put this one to the test. This is by Wiz, W-H-I-Z-Z. -Z. And Wiz makes the professional called the wedge. And you can see that it is wedge shaped. I'm really not understanding how that's gonna make me cut in better, but hey, we're gonna put it to the test. So I'm gonna get up here with my cut in bucket. I'm not gonna be using a four inch roller. I'm gonna put away my two inch knife. I've been preparing this wall for Venetian plaster. So I've been scraping off any um, peaks and valleys and spackling and painting. If you wanna see that Venetian plaster video, um, stay tuned. And please don't forget, if you like our videos, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I come out with a new video. It's free, simple, easy to do, but you have to hit the notification bell or subscribing doesn't do anything. So um, I guess I will start off with, um, this one's probably gonna be a challenge. So I won't start with that one first. We'll just start off with um, a high cap capacity because this one's been used first. So I'm gonna get up here on my ladder and we're gonna begin painting and see if I can actually cut a line longer than normal. So the bristle length, the filament length is longer than the typical filament length on a brush. And so what I noticed is the brush started getting, um, it started getting soft too soon. And I like my brushes to be pretty stiff doing cut-ins. And so it just got too soft for me too quick but we're gonna put it to the test with this really thin paint um, that will make being soft, okay, not a bad thing. So we're just gonna be testing right along already. I'm having a challenge keeping my bristles together, but my filaments together. And we're just gonna be painting along and I'm gonna work with this brush for a while and then I'll let you know down the road what I think. Here to me, um, cutting in, you need a stiffer brush. This brush is already way too soft for me. Now I'm gonna go do something really challenging and really unusual, and that's this little brush. I've been wanting to use this brush for a long time. There's a guy out there on social media, a happy painter. He uses this thing, and I saw him paint an entire door, like, with one of these things, a door jam is incredible how fast he was painting with it. So um, it looked pretty cool. But the whole idea behind this thing is you actually spin and rotate the brush. All right, my brush is starting to get more loaded up now. And you know, it's interesting. It's very surprising how far you can actually go with this little brush doing a cut in, you can see, I, I mean, if you can see, I'm like just twirling it in my hand, doing a cut in, that's kind of interesting. I would say it's, it's, it's definitely harder because you're rotating the brush. It's definitely harder to get for me, but hey, once again, let's give this thing a fair chance. It's harder to get a straight cut in because you're rotating it. I'm gonna give up on this brush now. And I'm gonna say, um, this is not a cut-in brush. And, um, but who knows, you might find some use for it. There it is, it's the Richard Elegance. Now we're gonna move on to, I'm sure everybody wants to know, the Stinger, how well this thing is gonna do. So the filaments on this thing, a lot softer. I think this is going to um, work pretty well you know, with this really thin paint the filaments aren't flat. So I'm a little bit concerned, you know, about this thing holding paint and it not dripping off. And I can already see it's coming off the ends. It's not wanting to grab the paint and hold on to the paint. The one improvement they made, the red filaments are now not as stiff as they used to be. So it's not roping the paint really bad. It has drawn a pretty good line. So it's drawn, um, the red filaments have the right amount of stiffness to draw a nice line. Red filaments are not softening up really fast like that um, 
that premier brush, I mean, once that thing got wet, that thing just softened up really, really fast. And makes, once the brush gets too soft, makes cutting in really difficult. I have to say that the, um, because the filaments aren't flagged, it's able to draw a really nice crisp line. Doesn't hold on to the paint, you know, um, very well. So I'm going to, let's see what I got next. I have the Wiz Wedge. So we're going to take and put the Wiz Wedge to the test and see what this thing can actually do. Out of the bucket, it's a pretty stiff brush and it's really weird because it's really light. So this thing is extremely light, but it is only a two and a half inch brush. I like using a three inch brush for doing my cut-ins. So that actually cuts a pretty good line right there. Um, that stiffness, it's, it has a lot of balance to the filaments. So the one thing is, is this brush is really holding its shape really well compared to the rest, rest of the brushes I've tested so far. Um, the, the filaments are all staying together nicely as I'm cutting in. I would say this one so far cuts in easier than any of the other ones I cut in with. So far, this wedge, I'm definitely not a fan of two and a half inch brushes at all. Um, I'm not sure if this thing comes in three inches, but I'm able to confidently draw a line quicker with this brush. Now I gotta say, um, once you get all these brushes, I'm comparing them right now with just one paint, one paint that's flicking paint everywhere. Jeez Louise. All right, so I got done testing, and you know, out of all of them, you know, uh, some of them claim that you paint straighter and faster. I think the Wiz Wedge says it'll you'll paint faster with it, so or paint longer with it. So um, I, I don't like to me any of the claims. I really don't see where I'm going to be painting longer with any of the brushes. I don't see where I can paint faster than with any of the brushes compared to the Premier Montauk. Uh, when it came to all, comes to all the brushes that I tested, the round elegance, that one um, had the most crooked lines out of all of them. I would say the Wiz Wedge had the straightest lines out of all of them. I don't think it made me any better cutting in. Um, I think the most versatile brush is the Premier Montauk. I think the, the Wiz Wedge a little bit stiff. Um, and I don't think it holds paint any longer because um, of the wedge, but that was a decent brush. It's built um, fairly well. It's a, a professional quality brush. Um, the Stinger brush, I don't think that the Stinger itself helped me cut in any better. It performs a lot better than it used to. The, the red portion of the Stinger used to be just way too stiff. Uh, the brush holds its shape up after you've got it up to where you are trying to actually draw your line. So it did perform a lot better. I think the, the wedge actually performed better than, um, than the, uh, the Stinger did. But out of all of them, the, uh, the worst brush was probably the, the Purdy High Capacity. It just gets way too soft, way too fast. The lines were just average at best, cutting in the lines with it. You're gonna say it was a used brush. The rest of these are new or fairly new. The Premier Montauk has only been used one time before that. Um, but you know, just as an all around brush, I'm gonna go with the Premier. If you're wanting a brush just to specifically help you with cut ends, I think the Wiz might actually help you draw a line a little bit better than the rest of the brushes that I use here. Hopefully you can actually see with this brush, you're gonna be able to see how I actually load up the brush, how I load up the roller close up live, and then how I do the cut ends, what it looks like really close. So I always just start off by just patting my brush, loading up my brush in my bucket, and then I begin my cut in. Just run it one way, and then because the camera is on the top of the brush, it's got to actually 
do a different method cutting in, but I'm going to cut it in one direction and then cut back the opposite direction and then I'll load up my roller and then actually roll the wall. cutting looks like. I take, put, get my brush about a half an inch away, then I'm going to run it up to the ceiling line, just run it along the ceiling one way, and then I run it back the opposite direction to hit anything I missed the first time. Now I'm going to load it up with my roller and fill it in. Hopefully you can see. Hold my brush out here so you can actually see it. This is actually going to take the wall, it's going to take two coats. Just run it up to my line. I'm going to run it about a foot and then run it back the opposite direction. Hit those spots I missed. Fill it in with my roller. So once again, I just pat my bristles, just pat them, and then get it up there as I'm moving, work it up to my ceiling, just dragging it, cutting it in with just the edge of the bristles, cut it back the opposite direction with just the tip. You can see I just missed this one little spot right here, with these little pinholes. Now I'm going to fill it in. So I do have to change slightly how I'm doing my cuttings because when I'm doing them, I'm cutting in this way and usually I would actually rotate the brush and cut it back the opposite direction but then the camera's upside down. I'm gonna try to do it that method and we'll see what it looks like. But I just put my brush up here, tap it, get it up there, work it to the ceiling. You can see the last cut-ins, they got paint all over the ceiling so I got to Take it onto the ceiling. So I come back the opposite direction like this, upside down. The camera's upside down, but we'll see what that looks like. One more time. Load up my brush. I'm going to cut it one direction. Just flip the brush over, cut it back the opposite direction. And I'm going to just fill it in slightly. You're gonna see right here where I'm actually cutting in right here. The last painter's actually got paint all over the ceiling. So I'm gonna to try to eliminate that by doing my cut in here. And I'm just gonna get my brush, get it about a half inch away, work it up to the ceiling. And I'm gonna to have to cover that 
the best I can by taking it on the ceiling a little bit more. You see I can cut that and just eliminate that right there. Now, let me go back and roll it. To give you a close up view, so I got my bucket right here. So I got my bucket spring right here, I got my roller. So I just dip my brush in just probably about an inch or so, then I pat it on the sides right here so I don't get any drips. And then I just rotate it out up to my ceiling. So there you have it, some really cool tips and tricks on how to cut in ceiling lines like a pro. Now you just gotta go grab your bucket, grab some paint and just start cutting in. Hopefully this is gonna help you, you know, down that pathway to cutting in straight lines. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, once again, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And we'll see you on our next video.